Hi and welcome to 3B Kids. Um, today we are going to be looking at making a nature mobile. For today's project you're going to need a range of different materials. Here I have different methods of fastening. I have some crafting um, twine, I have some string, I have some elastic bands and some wire. I have secateurs, scissors. I have a length of willow, although you could also use hazel or dogwood as an alternative. Um, should that not be available to you, as in the thinner end. I've also got three sticks here, which were offcuts from previous things I've made. And I can show you how to utilize those to create part of the structure too. You are also going to need a wide range of different materials and items that you may like to hang on your mobile. You may have collected these on previous trips into the great outdoors or in woods or beaches. Um, here I have some from just a little walk around our neighborhood. I'm gonna to start today's session by showing you how to make a basic round with your um, willow or your hazel or your thin end of the dogwood, um, whatever it is that you've found. Um, the reason that we utilize this particular material is because it is so bendy and it's fantastic. A lot of people use it for making baskets, for instance, um, because of this wonderful bendy nature that the wood has as a natural property. Now, in order to get it into a lovely round, if you've got a nice, thin, fresh piece of the tree, it's still got a lot of water content in it. And this means that it's actually quite easy to manipulate. However, as you get to the thicker end, you tend to find that it becomes a little bit um, stronger. And therefore, it's really important just to gently, using your thumbs, tease along your piece of willow or your dogwood or your hazel, whichever it is that you have to hand here. What I will also say is dependent on the length will then depend on the size of the circle you make, which will then determine how wide your mobile can then be because the pieces are all going to hang down at various points along this circular structure. So in this case, this end of my um, willow is actually a little bit too strong. So I'm gonna take my secateurs open them carefully and I'm going to make my structure a little less long for the circle and take that off. Remember if you need to use secateurs just make sure that you are confident using them um, and if a child's doing it just make sure you're watching or doing what's ever appropriate for the child and always put the safety catch back on afterwards. Um, again you can then tease along your wood structure until you feel you have a piece that will make a really nice circular shape like so, okay? You're then going to wrap your thin end through and round the looping and hold. And then the same at the other end, you're just gonna pull and twist it round to give you your final shape. This is where we need to start using our methods of securing. So you can use, or oh, I had laid out some natural twine and some string, and that's in part because I like the natural colors and I like the texture. However, if you wanna go for something a bit more bright and colorful, you could use embroidery threads, or you could consider maybe using some wool or something else that you have in your home in order to secure them. Now, it's really very simple. You just find the thin end first, I tend to find this is the better one to do. And you are just simply going to wrap, leaving an end and just holding that with my thumb. You can see that. You are just then going to wrap around nice and tightly the string, in this case, perhaps yours is wool, around the length of some of that overlap where the willow is wrapping around itself. You're just then going to take your ends, oh, mine's coming unraveled, perfect. Shows you just does, it does happen. Um, 
take your ends, your two ends, and you are just going to secure them using a normal knot. So left over right and oh, pulling it nice and tight, as you can see, and right over left. There we go. And pulling tight. Now, what this does is it gives you a, a nice sort of covered area along the circle and so okay and you still have some ends on the inside and that's fine at this point and whilst I was doing that interestingly <laughs> this piece just popped out so again sometimes at this point you then have to just twist your other end in just to make sure it's secured again take another piece of string wool twine whatever it is that you've chosen and you're going to be wrapping it around yet again so, now once you've put on your four areas um they're just there as markers really and to help you with some of the next stages but if you don't want to put your extra two on don't feel that you have to now if you're thinking to yourself uh i have no access to any willow or um, hazel or dogwood or anything like that you can always be creative and look around your home and see if you have anything around that might be sort of circular in shape that you could use. So for instance, um, this was something that broke off a mason jar. Um, you could potentially have something like that in your home. Um, I also have a round that came off a light fitting. This will be a very mini mobile. Um, I also have somewhere else a round that came from a broken saucepan. Um, so sometimes you have to really like think outside the box. Um, but failing that, I did also mention at the beginning with my resources that you can also create a triangular structure where you place together three sticks in a nice triangular shape and simply tie off. You, you can, I don't know, use a clove hitch or some square lashing. And we have another resource which talks about that. Um, which you can also check out if you're wanting to do it, or you can just fandangle and match it. This would mean that you would only have three points, obviously then three sides to be hanging from, rather than a circle and which I've divided into four. But again, you know, that's okay. It doesn't matter that much. Um, how you choose to do it is entirely up to you. you have to so now that you've created your circular structure, the next stage is that you're gonna be looking how to create how to hang this from the top so that it can create your mobile to which you can attach and hang down from. In order to do this, you're gonna need two lengths of string or twine or wool that are the same length. I've cut these, these are roughly, I don't know, 30, 35 centimeters long. You are going to tie them on one end to each of these. So you're going to tie on. If you wanna be pedantic, you can make sure that you keep all your knots on one side so that they are not as visible to the eye and it's going to come over the top and go to the one opposite to create a hanging effect and you're going to do the same with your second piece of string you're going to tie on the again one that hasn't already got one on and over to the last side so we have two structures that are crossing over each other the straps is See, they kind of cross over each other and create a point. And if you hang, you're likely to find a point in the middle, roughly, is what we're looking for. And you still might find that it weighs down a little bit more on one side, usually the side where you've had to do the tying off of the ends of the willow or your, your structure. You are then going to, from that middle point, oh, I've just lost mine, <laughs> you're just going to twist all of your strings together and there we go, I've got it going. You know, twist all your strings together till you find a central point in your circle. Okay, like that. That point I'm gonna hold and then unravel at the top. I'm then going to knot at the base to prevent those from coming apart. So just putting my circles together, pulling. There we go. I pulled those tight. And then again, I'm gonna to have to lay this down on the table for a second just to tie the top knot on across. Just, I just did a left over right and a right over left so that I get this kind of shape afterwards. 
and then I have two loops that I can pull together and hang. Okay, so that's now my hanging structure. You're going to cut yourself some long pieces this time of twine, string or wool, whatever it is that you're using. Um, I've made these roughly, I did sort of the length of my arm from the tip of my finger to my shoulder. Um, the length will depend in part how high you're going to hang this structure and how far down you want it to come over, I don't know, the room or a cot or a, anything. And you can put it anywhere outside. Um, and obviously you're going to lose a little bit of that length for tying on. So on mine, I've decided I would like to have eight points. So I'm going to hang one on each of my four quarter pieces. And also I'm going to hang in the sections in between as well. I've tied on all of my strings. You can see I have my round, my loop that I created to hang from. And as I pick it up, I have eight different strands that are now running down from the circular structure that I created at the top. If you who have created yourself a triangular base, I would suggest something slightly different um, to the four points, obviously, because you've got a three-pointed shape. I would be more likely to attach uh, my ends, three ends onto these points and use those to create my central hanging point. So if I just very quickly tie these ones on just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I'll do this very speedily. Okay, so that I can hang my mobile structure again, so slightly heavier on one side due to the thickness and the length of the woods being slightly different. It just means again that when I consider hanging, I might weight one side a little heavier just to counterbalance some of that. Probably being three sided rather than having eight strands, I would consider six. So halfway points and the corner points, but you know what? However many you choose to do is entirely up to you. So I hope you have lots of fun. For the next part of making your mobile, I tend to like to hang my mobile up, um, although that's not like a must. And um, it just means that you can really clearly see the weightedness of your, your circle or your triangle. Mine's very clearly dipped, okay? And it just means that when I'm thinking about my resources that I'm going to use, to hang on, I can then think about hmm, which one's going to weigh a bit more and which ones are going to weigh a bit less. And that can be quite useful. Um, so I've had another sort through my resources and I've selected some that I think would suit what I would like to create today. And you'll notice that I have short lengths of stick. I've selected the beach cones, fur cones, some conkers that I already had from the autumn, which I've drilled a hole through with a palm drill just to pre-prepare. I found some other beads that I have that I thought might be quite pretty. You know, you can always add those in too. Some leaves that specifically have some quite long stalks at the top, so it makes it easier to tie onto. Some fern and then a selection of other things. One handy tip I can give you is that if you're using string and wool um, and twine, the ends can sometimes fray a little. To prevent this, you can cut yourself a small piece of cello tape and if you take an end and you lay the end onto the sellotape, you can roll it very carefully up. It creates like a, an end on a shoelace, but it just prevents it from fraying, which can make it quite hard to get through some of the holes, especially if it's natural materials that you've drilled, like the conkers, for instance, that I did earlier. Um, and it's just something to consider. So I've just put one on there and just makes it a little bit longer and a little bit firmer and so easier to push through the hole. So if I just demonstrate, I'm going to start off with a small conker that I've drilled through. And there we go. It just goes straight through. I've done this on the side that I want to weight down a little bit more and underneath the object, once I've got it in the place I want to have it, I'm just going to create again a very simple knot, like so. Working with the string and the twine and the wool actually makes it a little bit easier in this respect um, because you can use the knots and the knots are large enough to hold objects in place. Sometimes if you have a really large hole inside, say for instance, a shell, you may have to consider 
making a double knot or a triple knot, something to make sure it doesn't just all slide down, unless you're going to thread thousands of different things all over, which is also possible. Um, if you're using something like fisherman's wire, um, which I do see sometimes people use for crafting, it doesn't have that advantage. It does mean that everything has to then be threaded on um, because it will just slide down. So you can make that choice for yourself. Um, I'm just going to continue adding different things on. I'm going to mix as a twig. And I'm just going to knot and tie on my different resources. This one I'm just going to wrap both sides, create a knot. Again, very simple, just around, looping on, and then hanging down. Now, if you were interested in creating a cascading effect, I am, is that on? Okay, you can create a cascading effect by deciding to have one of your eight only maybe coming a short length down. The one further round gets a bit longer. The third one round gets longer and the fourth one gets longer. And then it means as it turns round, you'll have one shorter one and it looks like it's going round in a really lovely spiral effect. But again, you don't have to, if you don't want to, standard mobile um, with them all the same length or differing lengths all over the place. They all work and they all do fine. So I'm going to continue with mine. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you create as always with the artistic outcomes that you will come up with. I love that. I love seeing them. So please do post them and I look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Bye from Weeby Kids.